Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson and today we're going to take a look at everything you need to know about the freeform gradient tool in Adobe Illustrator. Some cool tricks as well that'll really help just kind of push it over the top for you. So let's jump into Illustrator and get started right away. All right, so let's get right down to business here in Illustrator. I've got some wavy shapes. We're going to add some cool gradients to them. I've got a bunch of color swatches. If you're interested in copying, probably the easiest way would be just screenshot my screen and sample these colors directly from me because we want to get through this quickly. All right, so how does the freeform gradient work? Well, you can select any shape. We've got this fill, just a red color. And here in our gradient panel, we have not our linear or radial, but we have our freeform gradient. And when we click it, it's going to do this thing where it places a point or a couple points. Now, some some just very basic things you need to know about uh, the freeform gradient tool. Uh, you can click and drag the points to move them wherever you want. You can, well, if you double click, it brings up the color picker. You can click and drag the points to bring them wherever you want. You can drag the little circle to give the color in that point more spread. So that's kind of cool. And if you don't want a point to be there, like maybe I don't want this dark point to be down there, just select it and hit the delete key and boom, it's gone. You can drag your points around. You can click anywhere to add a new point. When you want to change the color of a point, you can have it selected and you can choose a swatch. That does the trick. You can double click on that little point and you can choose from your swatches. You can choose from the color picker or you can use the eyedropper and say like, hey, I want that pink color there. Bam, you got that pink color there. Very cool and very easy to do this. Now, one of the ways that I like working with freeform gradient and the way that I think we're going to work with it here with these shapes is not by using points. You can see here we can draw with points or lines. I want to draw with lines. So I'm going to select one of my points. And the first thing I'm going to do is choose the color. So I'm going to begin with this like navy orange salmon -y color first. So I can... Uh, just grab the eyedropper tool here in my gradient panel and say, give me that orange. And then I'm going to choose lines. Now that I've chosen lines, I want to choose the point from which I want to begin. And I want to begin from one of our points. And now what the lines is going to do is allow us to kind of click and create a gradient along a weird, funky line. And the reason I set the color is because you can see every point along the way now is going to get the color that I just gave it. So there we have it. Once you get to your last point, you can hit the escape key and then you just kind of have your gradient point. Now I'm going to grab this other gradient point here because it's sitting down here lonely and we need to we need to make a change. So with that now highlighted, we're going to use our eyedropper tool as well. By the way, you can just double click on the point like I said, grab the eyedropper here and select that dark blue. Now in order to get back to editing mode, right? Because you're like, well, I want to make another point. What do I do? It's just the eyedropper tool. You actually have to deselect the eyedropper tool and then you can go ahead and say, all right, we're going to come through here with the blue and I'm just going to kind of wavy wavy JV the blue around here, something like that. Now I'm going to speed this video up and I'm going to add a bunch of color to the rest of these shapes. And uh, we're going to wrap this thing up here in just a minute. All right. And we're back now before I complete this last freeform gradient. Number one, check out these cool looking shapes we have here in our layers panel looking like otherworldly blobs of alien goo. Uh, but I want to show you something really, really cool. So we have this point here and I want to make this this pink, right? And we want to make this whole front edge of this blob shape to be that pink. But what if we uh, what if we want to make this something that's very easy to edit? Let me explain real quick. So if I select this freeform gradient, and of course, if we want to edit it, we hit the edit gradient button in the gradient panel. Let's say the client says, we don't like this hot pink. We want it to be yellow. Well, we have to double click each of these points and say yellow, and then choose another one and say yellow. And we got to keep going through and select each individual point. That's lame. That is not very cool. So here's a little trick uh, and a really effective way to work around that. All right, we want to apply that pink edge, but we want flexibility. So we're going to select our pink up here. I'm just going to unlock my color swatches layer. So I've got this color pink and I'm going to sample it. So I'm going to, I'm going to use my eyedropper tool. I'm going to say, yep, there we go. Pink. The whole reason I'm doing that is I just want it down here in my, in my color swatches, right? I want to see it. And well, I can drag it from here to my color swatches. So now you can see I've got the pink as a color swatch. I'm going to double click that pink and I'm going to check on global. When you have a global color, anytime you apply this color in your Illustrator document, it's linked to the swatch. So what, what that means we can do is go edit gradient and say, all right, we've got this pink uh, or this, this point. We want it to be pink. Instead of sampling the pink as we've been doing, we're just going to come over here and click the color swatch. Boom, we've got pink. And when we go ahead and create our whole front lip here, it's all pink, just, just as we would expect, right? Great. And the client looks at it and says, ah, I really hate the pink. Um, can we make the front edge like a hotter pink? Okay, we can just double click on our swatch here and we can say 
make it a hotter pink, hit OK, and the gradient will automatically update every single one of those points. That's a really, really great uh, sort of power tip that I think is a must know when you're using the freeform gradient tool because if you have 100 gradient points and you need to go change the color of a bunch of them, instead of going through one by one, well, the global color is really going to bail you out. Now, something else I want to show you, let's zoom out. Uh, we're looking at our artwork here and we decide, all right, this is great. This is exactly what we want. Uh, we want to now just sort of elongate the blogs and uh, the blobs and place them on an angle. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's select all the blobs and we're going to group them. Object group. And I've got my group right there. I'm going to duplicate this group because we're about to mess it up. So go edit copy and uh, edit, edit whatever, edit paste in front and just shut one of them off. So we select this and well, how do we, how do we change it? Well, we we're going to make it a, a little bit longer. All right. That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and rotate it now because we want it to come across our document this way. And then I deselect. And look what happens when I deselect. I, just like the freeform gradient goes away. It's sort of like it becomes uh, just a straight linear gradient. Uh, I lose all the, the awesomeness that we just spent all that time creating. It just looks funky. It doesn't look the way we want it to look. So how do you preserve that and not have sort of the gradient remain stationary underneath your rotating shape? Well, here's what I normally do. So we have our group. I am going to go object. I'm going to ungroup it first and foremost. So I'm just working with my paths. And then I go object, expand appearance. And we have these clipping groups now and now with all these clipping groups I'll just regroup them just to keep them together and now I'm gonna take this and rotate this and you can see there when I deselect all of the gradients just rotate with the shapes I'm gonna hold down alter option I'm gonna stretch out the colors even more uh, just to make it look a little bit more uniform maybe something like so so that's tip number two about the tool in terms of rotating shapes I want to show you one more thing here I'm just gonna create a new layer and I'm going to grab uh, just a rectangle up here and let's say I fill the rectangle with, I don't know, let's grab one of these colors, but then throw a freeform gradient on here. We've got points. You know what? This, this little color scheme is kind of cool and it's just perfect for what I want. And let's say here we want to add some text to this. So I'm going to click a single time. I'm just going to type the word gradient. Just a big bold font that's easy for us to see from here. In fact, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. Um, and now gradients notoriously don't really play nice with live text. You can see we can try to add a gradient. It's just not really working out for us. And freeform gradients are no different. And why would they be? Because they're the most complicated of gradients. But we really want this gradient gradient to be applied to the text. Well, here's basically all you do. You just create the, the gradient in a shape as I've done. I'm going to crush it down a little bit here. We've got our whole gradient and then just drag the text over the gradient, select both text and gradient, right click and choose make clipping mask. And that way you have the gradient there underneath the text. Now, if I open this up, I can still select the rectangle and edit the gradient if I uh, wished. And likewise, I can come over here. I can double click on the text, enter into the text and I can edit the text, maybe make it a gradient instead or something like that. Uh, so you have a little bit of options when it comes to uh, adding gradients to text, specifically freeform gradients. And just know there's a quick way that you can add a freeform gradient to text here in Adobe Illustrator as well. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the freeform gradient tool in Adobe Illustrator. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Well, that's it for this one, folks. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe and turn those notifications on. And if you really enjoyed this tutorial, I got another cool Illustrator tutorial all about creating this moody sunset scene from Vietnam uh, in Illustrator. Really cool. You can click on it and visit that link right there on the screen. And just a reminder that I love all the people, but I especially love people just like you who stick around and watch the video all the way until the end. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.